It is 6 p.m. and I will call this meeting of the Lunenburg Town Council to order. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And with that, I'll look for a motion to approve the agenda as circulated. Moved by Councillor Duggan, seconded by Councillor Bertels. Any additions, deletions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next up is the approval of the November 23rd council meeting minutes. If I can get a motion to approve those. Councillor Ernst, seconded by Deputy Mayor. Any errors or omissions to note? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. All right, we have one public here, uh, one presentation, sorry, rather, tonight. It is the RCMP quarterly report, and Corporal Payne is here to deliver that. Uh, you can come up to the mic there, Corporal Payne, and we'll give you 10 minutes and then follow with five minutes of questions. Well, good morning, or sorry, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Payne, I'm the Community Station Supervisor for the Lindenburg District. I'm currently working in Lilydale Detachment. Uh, up a slide for the, I guess the second, the next one. So I'll be talking of the second quarter stack, right from July 1st to September 30th of this year. Uh, we had 415 summary offense tickets that were written uh, within the Lundberg District, 110 written warnings, in 74 checkpoints that was throughout the district. The next one. And one more. So our SSRO going into our resources. Our SSRO is our school safety resource officer. It's currently Constable Ted Bailey. He works out of the Chester detachment. He over, he's overseeing right now 18 schools. So he's uh, doing a lot of work within the uh, Bloomberg District from New Germany all the way down to Chester. Uh, Constable Sonia Upshaw is in the Chester Detachment. She's currently the Community Policing Programs Officer. Uh, she's doing everything in the community with the program and making partnerships and going to meetings uh, with our local resources. Next slide, please. So between July 1st, September and September 30th, the town of Lunenburg has received 243 calls. That's up approximately 10 call or 15 calls from this point last year. Uh, they all range from assault, drug trafficking, all the way to a speeding ticket, a speeding uh, in the town. Uh, check stops were we did uh, we conducted five check stops within the city or within the town of Lunenburg. We went to nine false alarms. We had one well-being check. Uh, mental health calls are five, and this is within the town. Uh, we had zero sudden deaths, which is a good thing. Uh, crime prevention is 10, 911 calls are 11, and assistance to general public is one. These, all these calls here are no criminal code charges. They're just calls for attendance for police to arrive and investigate what's going on. These are some of the calls that occurred within that time frame. On August 1st, Lindenburg detachment members received a report of an assault with a weapon, the victim being an 18-year-old female. Members responded immediately, arrested the male suspect in the court in charge in the court or it's before the court right now. On August 12th, we received a call of an impaired driver on Dufferin Street in the town Lunenburg. Members attended, locate the suspect, locate the suspect vehicle and driver. The driver pled guilty and has been sentenced accordingly before the court. On August 27th, these are just calls that, uh, that have some uh, investigation to it. <coughs> On August 27th, the RCMP were called to a, an assault at Fishman Hospital. A suspect came in and assaulted the security guard. Uh, members arrested, or members attended and arrested the uh, SOC and charged the matter before the court. And on September 30th, 2021, a Lundberg responded to a complaint for breaking enter into a residence. Members attended, located two youth in the residence, charges laid. Uh, right now, it's possibly that the charge is going to go before a justice referral for the youth. Those are some of the calls that we've been going to um, and responding to where charges have been laid. Uh, 
some of the current issues right now. Um, I'll bring it up, I'll bring the attention to the last slide, please. Uh, right now, the, over the last few months, and I'll make note of it in the next uh, quarter, is there's been a young female going to door to door with, in the town of Lunenburg and outside. She's knocking on the doors, asking for money from people. We've got numerous, rec numerous reports over the last few months, probably the last three, four months. We understand who the female is, and we're looking at, re or sorry, we contacted resources, our community partners with social services, and we're dealing with it in that frame of mind. I'm asking the residents of Lunenburg and town of Lunenburg, I'm not saying not to give her money. The, the story's the same where she comes in, she says she has a daughter in the IWK. Uh, we can't uh, say she does or she doesn't. Um, she's pro or provided no risk to the, of safety or she's no risk to the public. Um, up to the residents whether you choose to give her money or not. Uh, I'm just saying, just be cautious about people coming to the door. She's coming to the door at all hours of the day. Um, we've had some people say that she's shown up at two in the morning. We're working, we know, we know who she is, and we're working with community resources, like I said, social services, uh, to help uh, get that away from the criminal justice side of it. Second, <clears throat> between October 29th and November 30th, there was numerous vehicles, numerous vehicles that were rummaged through the town of Lunenburg. Um, we've received a few calls on it, but it seemed that social media had a lot more reports about vehicles. People were making more reports on social media than they were coming to us directly. Uh, I encourage everybody to uh, the town of Lunenburg to please call us so we can make note of it and make a report of it. Um, I also ask that most of these cars that were broken into in the town, uh, the vehicles were open. Uh, vehicles wide open, wallets, keys, money were in the vehicle. At this time of year, any time of year, uh, these are time, these are uh, crimes of opportunity. Uh, they're not going to break into your vehicle. Uh, they're not going to smash through your windows. To that effect, they're just looking for vehicles that are open. And most of these vehicles that were open, so I ask the residents to lock up their vehicles and not keep anything of monetary value. Um, currently, investigations ongoing. We have a, a couple of suspects in mind. Uh, at this time, that's the end of my report. If there's any questions or concerns. Um, Thank you, Corporal Payne. Are there any questions of councillors at this stage? Councillor Halverson. My mic's off. Oh, there it is. Just my light wasn't on. Uh, thank you, Corporal Payne. And I just, last time you were here, we spoke about, I asked about uh, uh, the, um, the, allotment the allotment for the town. Yeah. I have that answer for you. you do? Great. So, uh, Currently, the town of Lunenburg, uh, there's four constables and a corporal assigned to the town of Lunenburg. We're here all, we're here, yep, yep, we're all coming here. Uh, our office hours are from 7 in the morning till uh, 3 a.m. So for the four hours, so we all have them. Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Any further questions of councillors at this stage? Councillor Sanford. Thank you, Constable Payne. Um, just Corporal. wondering with regards to, sorry, Corporal, just wondering with regards to the suspects that you had in mind with regards to the break ins in the vehicles. Yeah. Are the suspects the same people that are breaking in a new town that are breaking in an old town? I can't answer that. Okay. I mean, uh, it, uh, the reason is. Uh, okay. Thank you. I was trying to figure out how prevalent this is and if it's just the same people or if there's a few people around. Any further questions at this stage? Seeing none, thank you, Corporal Payne. Same to you. So there's one piece of correspondence, a letter for information, which I'm sure councillors saw. That takes us to unfinished business. And the first item is the reappointment of committee members. As councillors will recall, this was deferred by unanimous consent from the 
November 23rd meeting. So there's a motion there and an updated list. Can I get a motion to approve those appointments? Moved by Councilor Bertel, seconded by Councilor Ernst. Any discussion or debate? Uh, Councilor Halverson? I do have one. Oh, common lands. That's what it was. Yeah. Do we have that uh, the fifth appointment on the common lands committee? Is I that... believe our members on common lands are former Mayor Bailey and Deputy Mayor Moser. Is that correct? I, I just noticed on here there's also uh, Councillor Chastivino from LODL and Eric Walters as well. Uh, the one I was questioning, uh, just because there's a question mark beside it, is uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Peter Tanner. Has he agreed to serve? We know. I believe that's an update with Kevin no? or Mr. Uh, I just received yesterday notification uh, from the court that uh, Errol Knickel has been appointed to that as a public representative. And we'll continue on, I think, for a one year term. Okay. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Polymer dosing trials on wastewater treatment plants, uh, DAF system. There is a staff report and recommendation that the engineer would like to speak to that. Um, yes, um, <clears throat> um, th this report is a revision of a report that was uh, pre pre presented in the fall. And just as a quick re recap, it was a study that was started um, <clears throat> but, but by the Dalhousie Center of Water Resource Studies um, in co collaboration with the CB CBCL to look into how we can um, op optimize the polymer dosing in the, the wastewater tr treatment plant. So um, we had completed a couple of phases um, in the plant over, over the past year, year or so. And those to testing of phase one and phase two were all so sort of laboratory based. And uh, with the pur purpose of understanding um, if that there is, is a possibility of being able to optimize the amount of polymer that, that we inject into the system. Um, <clears throat> and, and if, if the, the, the amount can be, can be optimized. And that, uh, that, uh, the, the, that lab to testing proved prove that, that there is an ex excellent chance that, that we, we would be able to um, reduce the polymer, the dosing, but by at least 50% or more. Um, it was proposed um, <clears throat> that, that we to take that to testing to, to the next le level, uh, which is that basically the being able to inject um, the, the various um, rates of polymer into the operating system and, and to, to, be, to be able to, to, uh, to test and to, to, to record um, <clears throat> um, optimal the dosing le le levels. Um, so, so the, the the operating team is still very much um, in favor of pursuing the next le level of to testing in order for us to uh, opt optimize the dosing le levels. <clears throat> But uh, it was uh, put back to the CBCL um, to uh, revamp re their pr proposal and to update it with the intention of being more cost effective and better to suit the requirements of the town. And that that's what, what we're presenting tonight for council's re, re kick into consideration. Um, so, so the to table pr proposal. Um, um, is to, 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 to perform testing to reduce the polymer doses at full scale in a controlled way while collecting data to support a decision whether or not to reduce the, the current polymer do dose or not. And this work is a key part of working towards an improved instrumentation-based polymer dosing control. 
as opposed to the to the, to the set rate that, that we've done um, so since the operation of the plant. So a new proposal was put for, forward but by the consultant and uh, and uh, um, it was adjusted to be more cost effective. Um, it has shorter and less for frequent meetings, uh, fewer site visits, but by the consultant, uh, fewer but more to target it. Uh, it's a sampling and less for formal reporting um, completed by the Dalhousie student um, of the project. And we figure that 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 this adjustment will also be able to provide us with the with with, with the, the 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 necessary results in order for, for us to, to be able to, to optimize the polymer the dosing. Um, uh, the sc scope and the responsibilities are in the CBCL proposal that was attached to the memo. The schedule of the work uh, would commence to this month and would run um, to till the end of March. And the cost per, per, per proposed for from the CBCL is 18,000. Um, in addition to this for funding, I've noted in here that, that the cost um, <clears throat> would, what would pro probably be be be, um, be be applicable for for this M tax for funding, in which the CBCL has often accessed in the past on a similar pro project. Um, if the if the pro project is a pro approved, that they can make make an application for for this for funding, and uh, it would uh, pro provide uh, for funding of about of seventy five hundred dollars that that can be taken directly off the uh, cost. Um, of this. Um, get, getting the back to, to the expenditure ju justification that now the, uh, the, the calculations as far as the, the value of what, what we're paying for changes a bit. Um, in my report, I assumed a to total the budget of 23,000, which includes CBCL's quote and uh, and uh, net, net HST and some internal for project net management funding. Um, we, we had identified that currently we spend about $22,000 per, per year on the dry, dry chemical uh, that, that we use in the plant. And to conservatively, we estimate that we can reduce this by, by half uh, and uh, potentially more. So that, that would just save us at about $11,000 per, per year um, in chemical consumption. Um, and that, that shows a payback of just about uh, to two years uh, for, for us to, uh, to, to get, get that, uh, for, for that costing back. Uh, and there, there's some other maintenance and savings that, that we had to talk about as well. Um, <clears throat> So, so since we will be using the polymer in the existing plant for, for at least the next three, three to five years, uh, depending upon the path forward decisions on the long-term wastewater treatment plant, um, it's anticipated that, that we feel that, that the study conclusions will, will, will result in a profitable or a, a, a preferable adjustment to, to the current constant to dosing to a significantly lo lower le level and, uh, and that would be the basis of the ju justification. Um, so as far as for financial impact, um, uh, in co collaboration with the town's for finance director, um, it is re recommended that we get the for funding from the current year's so sewer reserve to transfer and to, to reduce this amount of that, that we were going to transfer, um, but by the 23,000 that we predict for the project. And if we are successful in receiving this, this, this uh, MTAX for funding, uh, that that would be only about 15 and a half thousand that, that we would have to pay for, from the town. So, so the uh, rec recommendation for from the town is to approve the execution of the phase three uh, scope of work uh, as presented in the, this the, this memo. Thank you.
There we are. Okay. There's a draft motion from the staff recommendation. It is, is it anyone's pleasure to move that motion at this stage? Councilor Halverson, is there a seconder? I'll ask one more time. And if there's not, then this will die on the floor. Is there a seconder? All right, seeing no one, the motion dies on the floor. That takes us on to wastewater treatment plant uh, upgrade pre-design work, uh, staff report and recommendation. Uh, Dennis, if you would like to speak to that as well. <coughs> so the memo that, that we have to, to present um, is with regards to the wastewater treatment plant, the pre-design work that we completed um, uh, uh, in the summer and early fall. Um, <clears throat> and that this memo uh, ha has to do with, uh, with, with effectively and efficiently for trying to con continue with the technical work um, as we tr transition for, from this uh, pre-designed stage into more, more advanced um, 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 engineering uh, and to technical uh, de definition. So we, we want to request that, that we continue the, the design work for, for the wastewater treatment plant in three key areas. And the purpose of the request is to be able to better define the project technically, which will include more detailed and accurate estimates, as well as the scope of work. Uh, and be able to, that this will enable the project to be better defined for any kind of uh, upcoming funding request that, 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 that we understand is on the immediate horizon. Um, so, so, so that this is anchored off of the pre-designed reports uh, pre, uh, complete, completed by the CBCL in the summer of 2021. <coughs> um, with, with that, it was presented and approved um, um, that, that a decision to be made to proceed with a SBR or a sequence batch re re reactor option uh, at that time. Um, now that the SBR option has been chosen, we need, will we require more detail to better define the technical and financial aspects and to mitigate the risks identified uh, for, from the conceptual phase? Um, <clears throat> so with this, that there are some key areas with the SBR option that that require for further de development and they're, that they're pre pre presented in our memo. Um, the first of which is, uh, is uh, understanding per project plot planning and to uh, put together the plot planning for from now until the end of the execution of the project. So with the selection of the SBR option and the intent to undertake this within a relatively short time frame, the overall long-term project scope plan and budget can now be for firmly established. There are some technical aspects um, that, that are discussed which did delve into more design details. Um, however, there are parts of the short-term and long-term scopes that have been moved around based on discussions about how best to, to deal with the higher priority short-term items and what items can be included in the long-term plan. So, so because of this, so some of the items have been moved from short-term into long-term, uh, so such as emergency generator, aeration, aeration blowers, and aeration upgrades. Um, so some of the, of the building condition assessment stuff that, that was identified um, um, that makes sense, sense to, to be ha handled now in-house. And some sh short-term items be, being planned for the execution over the next number of years, such as headworks upgrades, the process building roof, and so some miscellaneous items in the process building. 
Um, so, so, so with the items that, that were identified in the initial uh, per project, as we say, um, uh, items are going to be re re rearranged and, and, and what would have to be managed and to set up for, for our long-term per project plan. Uh, item nut number two that we uh, propose to get a uh, to get a advance start on is the process design um, for for the plant. So the town has installed flow flow, flow meet metering and increased influence influence sampling for frequencies since, since that the report was completed. And there's considerably more data and details available, which will enable a deeper look into specific design for the flow conditions and loads. So, so, so that this will result in a more detailed analysis and accurate um, equipment selections, sizing, and, and configuration that, that will enable us to move further down the, the design trail. Um, it'll enable analysis of hydraulic profiles of the systems and determine what, what, whether new lift station is required. Another item of unique concern is bl blower sizing and whether the blowers can be moved into the process space. Um, allowing expansion of the electrical room without adding the building expansion. <clears throat> so, so with this for further de definition of the pr process to de design, we can get, get our heads around more accurate about what the scope is and of course the co corresponding um, co cost in, in, in involved in that. Uh, the th third item is a ge geotechnical investigation. And th this has to do with uh, analyzing the soils in the lo location around the existing plant that, that we hope to uh, to do extend the uh, building of the wastewater treatment plant the facilities um, because the area is um, is a old land landfill site um, the, the 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 characteristics of the foundations will have to be to be explored and understood um, in order for, for us to, to be able to to, to design fit foundations and supports um, of the heavy, heavy, heavy equipment and the buildings that, that have to be there. Um, so, so it's been very important for, for us to understand the, uh, the, the scope and the, um, and the, and the, the design that necessary, um, uh, but based on, on that, that kind of terrain. Um, Following with that geotechnical investigation would be st structural the design of the tanks that, that are re, 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 re required for, for the SPR. So uh, with the ge geotechnical and understanding that, that stuff, we can start uh, putting a bit more fl flesh around the st structural des the design of the tanks and to, to be able to understand what that scope and costing is going to be. Um, the last item is the details developed around electrical de design. Um, that there's a bunch of significant electrical areas that need confirmation in order to secure the design criteria, uh, the overall electrical service size, and what, whether the existing main entrance size is ad adequate for the new and revised lo loading. <clears throat> uh, um, requirements for the expansion of the building to accommodate uh, new electrical services and the emergency generator to transfer switch and understanding of the configuration of the emergency generator to transfer switch. So, um, so, so this, this, this study is meant to be, be able to, to help us tra trans transition um, in an effective manner um, between today and the onset of the the, the more de detailed engineering the de design to coming up for the plant. Um, in the in the financial uh, aspects of this, um, our our es estimate, uh, including the net HST to be able to do these uh, of these items. Is a seventy-one thousand for five hundred dollars. Um, um, 
it, <clears throat> within the wastewater approved capital projects for 21-22 funded from the deed transfer taxes, it's anticipated that there will be budgetary savings that could allow for this project to proceed with a deed transfer tax funding that's already allocated to the wastewater projects for the years 2020 to 2122. This is primarily due to the fact that the town received a PCAP for funding for the saltwater intrusion, intrusion to check valve installation at uh, $52,500 of savings. Um, <clears throat> in order to avoid project delays, it's recommended that the, that the town award this work to, to CBCL as a sole source um, um, as, as that they had, done, they had completed the pre-design pre work and that there can be a procurement process for any future detailed design and, and, uh, and construction work. So we anticipate that the work on this project will begin immediately and the majority will, complete it, will be completed by the end of March in 2022. Um, but there'll be some elements of this that, that will carry over into uh, fiscal 22 to 2023. So uh, uh, in conclusion, the staff is re re recommending that the wastewater treatment plant and the outfall pre-design project be extended to include the additional planning and design work as we've described above. Thank you, Dennis. There is a draft motion provided there. Is that Deputy Mayor moving the motion? So, so moved, Your Worship. Seconded by Councillor Halverson. Any discussion, debate, questions? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. I think just, you know, on behalf of Council, I'd like to maybe uh, mention to staff that the silence from the last motion is sort of an indicator that I think we want you to. Uh, move swiftly on the new build and not, you know, waste any time, you know, mucking around with an, an old system that, that's been failing us for many years now. So this, uh, you know, move swiftly and, uh, and get on with our, with our new wastewater treatment plant. Any further discussion, questions? See, oh, Councillor Halverson. You didn't think of it off that easy, did you? Uh, I, I would ask uh, Dennis, I mean, I, obviously we've done a lot of work with CBCL. Um, they've, they've done a good job for us here. My only concern is, I, you know, a sole source uh, contract. I, I'm always hesitant when I hear that, but I do understand. I, I guess my question for you is, do you really feel that the, uh, the expediency offered is, is uh, outweighs the, the idea of sending it out for RFP? Uh, I, do, I do honestly believe, believe that, um, that based on the work that, that they've done for throughout the past year on the pre-design, um, that their understanding and that knowledge of the scope of work that, um, that, that, they've, that, that they have uh, put, put together for, for us has been bang on. It's been, it's been what, what we needed for, for the first part of it. Um, and I think, as uh, uh, as the de deputy mayor had mentioned, that that we did, don't want to delay any further. And if we went out to bid, it would it would certainly did delay. Um, and I don't think that you would get a bit better pro proponent based on the pre previous work that the CBCL has done. Okay, uh, the CAO would like to weigh in. Thank you very much. Um, in a previous life, I was. Uh, the provincial chair for a uh, water wastewater cost shared arrangement between provincial government and the federal government. That process is a very onerous process with a tremendous amount of reporting requirements. And uh, so the province would go out, they would ask for applications, we would get the applications, we had staff review the applications. And the one, one of the factors that were really critical to us was the level of preparedness of each of the applications. And, and you could tell the difference. Some people had detailed diagrams, drawings, detailed specs on it, while other people would say, yeah, we'd like, a, we'd like a project approved. <laughs> the ones that got approved were the ones that were, were at a greater level of, of readiness, at, at preparedness, because what, what we did not want to have happen is once you approve the projects with the federal government, uh, if, if somebody for whatever reason ended up dropping off, 
the process to replace that was extremely difficult because you've probably already chewed up the new between six months and a year of time. And therefore, because all these projects are time limited, you can't go back to a municipality and say, well, you didn't quite make the cut last time, but you know, it, it, can you fit in now? Typically the answer is no. What, what ends up happening then are, are funds drop to the bottom because we weren't able to utilize them, right? Which is not good for the provincial government, not good for federal government, and, and not good for municipalities. So my point here is that this work is about preparing us for that application. This work will get us in a position where I believe will we'll strengthen our case dramatically uh, with respect to our likelihood of, of being approved going forward. Thanks, Kevin. Councillor Sanford. Just one question. I'm curious um, if in the past there's been a, a geographical assessment in that area that's already been completed in the past. Does anybody know? Of the land, yes. Yes. Okay. I just had heard that that land in that area had been assessed previously for development in the context of the land itself. It wasn't housing, but anyhow, I'm, I'm thinking it was in the context of public service. No. Okay. I'll, I'll have a look. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Discussion or debate? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, we have the water treatment status report for July to September. If there are any notable highlights from that. Um, um, the, uh, the, the quarterly report um, regarding the potable water is presented. Uh, it uh, so summarizes results that we had for, from July to, to September. Um, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> to just as of a very quick re recap that there was no issues or excursions that, that we have identified um, with, with the potable water quality. Uh, the only issue um, to, to note um, is uh, similar to what was presented the last qu qu quarter has to, to do with but uh, with what water draw off of the Dares Lake um, for four hour dem demands for, for the town. And uh, but that has been identified. It goes into our reports um, to, to the government the bodies and uh, and it'll um, that these needs uh, of the of the water to draw will will be for further assessed as we have to do a permit application for the water draw in uh, 2022, and, uh, and and but that's what where we 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 will capture and get, and hopefully get get approval for for the water uh, con consumption rates that that we require in the town. Thank you. I have Councillor Halverson with a question. Yes, thanks, Dennis. I, I did have a question about about that draw. Uh, why are we? Do, do we know why we're exceeding the withdrawal rate that we have now? And, and is the the request to up that rate, you know, in anticipation of new development, or what's the um, reason behind all that? Um, as for <clears throat> the, the, the exceedances isn't but very much. Um, as as uh, we've we've identified, um, it's just that basically having to do with the demand demands within the town um, for trying to to uh, to do the supply it to meet meet, meet the uh, consumption rates that that we have. I guess that's my my question is uh, 
it seems like our, our demand must be increasing if you know we're starting now to exceed when we hadn't historically. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, and is, is there any indication why that is? Like, is it just cons the residential con consumption? Is it industrial? Something something's changed. I'm just curious yeah. if you know that. Um, I don't. I don't not know it spe spe specifically over over the time, but but the rate rates were set up to ten y y y years ago. So so that that application has to be done every ten years. Um, so, so 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 I guess quite quite a bit has changed in the in the in the, in the cons consumption within the town over the last ten years. So so the new application uh, will will will. will 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 uh, will will be expected to meet the uh, to the anticipated the demand for, for the next 10 years. Thank you. Any further questions? <clears throat> All right, then we've got the wastewater treatment report. Um, again, with the well, wastewater treatment um, report, um, to just as a, a summary of the testing. Um, that that we've done over that qu quarter. Um, um, so so we did the uh, required number of tests per month for uh, so CBOD, SS, E. coli, and pH, and all the all the all the tests uh, came out to be within the acceptable required ranges. Uh, so so that there was no, no issue um, during that time period. Any questions? Councillor Sanford. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, I would really like to see this table, and I think I mentioned it the last time this was presented. I would like to see this table and the same table for 2019, 2020, and we have 2021. This is a huge opportunity for us to be able to look at what our inflow for wastewater is into the plant in 2019 when we would have had a full tourist engagement in the town of Lunenburg, and in 2020 and 2021 when we didn't have it. And I'd also like to see an overlay of rainfall amounts by month for each of these so that we can then look at the impact that the rainfall is having in the context of what's going into the wastewater treatment plant or the actual sewage by residents or visitors to the community that's going into the wastewater treatment plant. There's an opportunity for us to have some very clear data without, it's, it's not a lot of work, right? The information's there, it's just a matter of plotting it into the graph and, and putting it up in the same way. And I think it would really give insight is to, for us and for staff at the wastewater treatment plant about, you know, do we focus on separating water lines, which we, which we know we need to do, or, you know, what are the implications in the context of the increase in visitors to the community in sewage input into the treatment plant? Thoughts? Okay, any further questions? All right, seeing none, that takes us on to committee meeting minutes, recommendations, reports, and notices of motion. The first is a um, request, a report and resignation and a request to advertise for our position on the Western Regional Housing Authority. That seems pretty pro forma to me. Anybody would like to move that? The Deputy Mayor, is there a seconder? Councilor Ernst? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, the motion's carried. That takes us on to a recommendation from the Planning Advisory Committee from the November 24th public participation meeting. There is one recommendation there um, as circulated. Um, is there a staff presentation on that? There needn't be, but I'm just, no. If you wish, Your Worship, I could just briefly introduce the amendment. Someone else's mic on. Good 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I'll bet you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. This is an application from the Lunenburg Arms located at 94 Pelham Street, and they would like to consolidate 94. Thank you very much. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. There, are, yeah, it's on. Testing. Just go ahead, Arthur. Okay. Um, they made an application to consolidate 94 Pelham Street with 102 Pelham Street to enable a 14 suite expansion to the hotel. They would also like to consolidate the lands across the street, which is the surface parking lot at the corner of Pelham Street and Duke Street to facilitate additional hotel suites and an accessory parking structure. They have made application to amend the maximum lot size as described for lot zone one in accordance with the town's land use bylaw. The request is to enable subdivision approval for the proposed lot consolidations. To address the request with minimum impact on our municipal planning strategy and land use bylaw, with regards to maintaining the maximum lot area and maximum lot frontage requirements for lot zone one, council may wish to amend the municipal planning strategy to enable them to be considered by development agreements, rather than enabling a blanket as of right for the entire lot zone one, a development agreement process will enable council to consider the applications on a case by case nature. Therefore tonight, uh, we're considering a first reading and proceeding to a public hearing in order to consider and deem advisable amend the municipal planning strategy to enable the waiver of maximum lot size by development agreements. Thank you, Arthur. Any questions at this stage? Seeing none, there's a draft recommendation and a motion provided. Is it anyone's pleasure to move that motion? Moved by the deputy mayor. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Council Bertels. Any discussion or debate? Oh, Councilor Halverson, sorry. Well, I'd just like to say, I think we, uh, we all know this quite contentious in here. And I think we've all spoken with a lot of people over the town. So I wanted to thank everybody who's taken the time to speak with all of us over the last few weeks to talk about this proposal. Um, I'm personally, I'd, I'd like to see all the information come forward on this uh, proposal before we decide whether or not we're going to approve it. So I would like to see this go to a, a public meeting. Okay. Any further discussion or debate? Councillor Sanford. I agree with Councillor Halverson and thanking everybody that's come forward, whether they were in favor of or opposed to, um, and those that did presentations to the PAC committee. Um, I've gone and given a lot of thought to the information that has been put forward so far. So I've just done a few notes and if you'll just bear with me, um, I'm gonna read my notes because again, I've been thinking about this for a little bit as I'm sure a lot of people have. So I'm thinking on the long-term health of Lunenburg requires a focus on the long-term health of the heritage district and especially the outstanding universal value. So that was one thing that stood out for me. As I listened to both 
you know, those opposed and those in favor, I, I feel there is not a clear benefit that's been demonstrated to the town and the residents of Lunenburg in having lot consolidation in this particular development locate within lot zone one. The community wants and has asked for balanced development. And I, I share this because, and, and you'll laugh because you see all these tabs and I'm not gonna read them all, but there is one little piece in here I did wanna read that speaks to uh, what I'm saying. The community wants balanced development. So in our plan, it says currently there's a strong representation in the accommodation, food services, arts and entertainment and retail trade industries primarily associated with the town's popularity as a tourist destination. Many in the community want to see a greater variety of employment opportunities across all sectors, greater balance in the types and scales of businesses that operate will benefit the community and provide a greater diversity of employment opportunities. So that really resonated with me based on the things that I was hearing, but it also gave me a good opportunity to go back and have a look through the plan. And I would encourage people to do that because you know things get mixed up, things get confused a bit. A lot of pages in this, right? So again, I just encourage folks to take a look through that again. So I hear the community is wanting balanced industry and it seems to be tipped in one direction at this point. I feel that there's gonna be a cost to the town and to council, and that cost is gonna come in multiple ways. First, it's gonna come with the demolition of 102 Pelham Street. It's gonna come with an erosion to the streetscape in that area because of the demolition. I believe it undermines all the great work that we've done in the comprehensive community plan. I feel we would be eroding community trust. We would be eroding the transparency and the collaborative nature of the work that we've created with the community to this point. And I've really welcomed and embraced the community input in this process, as I'm sure others have around this table. It would erode the vision that we've built together. So I question myself, are we gonna cherry pick our way through this comprehensive community plan? Is that what we're gonna do? Because I'd like to know. I don't, I don't feel that's our place, right? So I find I'm asking that question. And then I'm thinking about the work that lies ahead in aligning the heritage conservation plan and bylaws to the comprehensive community plan. So we're working in that direction currently. So how do we align the heritage conservation plan and bylaws when we are changing this. And there's significant changes. They're not, it's not just a little change that we're proposing when we're talking about law consolidation. I always like to have a solution. So I'd like to recommend that we wait for the updates to the heritage conservation district plan and the bylaws before or if any consideration is given to making major changes to our municipal planning strategy document and our land use bylaws specific to lot zone one. I feel council has an increased responsibility to the town of Lunenburg today and for the future. We do as a council. And I just want to say that I'm not opposed to development but I am in favor of making informed decisions. Thank you. So Councillor Sanford, just to be clear, would you like to move that this be deferred until a new heritage uh, conservation district plan and bylaw be adopted? Yes, I would. Okay. Is there a seconder for that motion? Councillor Duggan? Any discussion or debate on the deferral motion? Deputy Mayor. Oh, thank you, Worship. Well, the problem with some of these, you know, when, when we do a comprehensive community plan is that once we do them, then we'll take out excerpts from the plan that would suit whatever argument that we want to bring forward. And I could bring one in the same, in, in the same context. I mean, in 6.6, it says good plans are not set in stone. Well, every, every effort has been made to be thorough in the preparation of this municipal planning strategy, things can change. 
the assumptions under which this plan was made, the technologies and the land use issues of the day and the values of community members will all change over time. This plan must be monitored periodically, reviewed and updated to remain effective. And then further down, it says this municipal strategy uh, may be amended from time to time and it's not necessarily to wait for formal reviews, right? So, you know, I, that's where I say under, uh, uh, by giving this the opportunity to go to public hearing to see if, uh, if indeed um, development agreements are, you know, would be a, the, the mechanism in which we could look at a specific instance time by time, it would make sense to do it that way. Uh, I mean, waiting, waiting is only going to, uh, you know, it's lost opportunity for a developer. So, you know, while we have someone knocking on our door, we're, we're, we could lose that opportunity waiting for something that could come back and, and even support this further. So I, I think we should move forward with our public hearing at this time. Okay. okay. Councillor Halverson. I think. Thank you, Council Bertels. Thank you. I just wanted to say I, I liked hearing both from Susan and from W. Moser and Mr. Halverson. I am definitely in favor of wanting this to go to the public hearing. I think, as Ed said, is we need to hear both sides. We need to, you know, hear what our community wants and hear from the developers. Council Duggan. So I think that after uh, the last PAC meeting, it was. It was quite clear uh, from the people that did come forward that, you know, there are some issues with the um, with the proposal as it stands. So, two of the things that really stood out is our, you know, there wasn't any consideration to year-round housing. I know that it was mentioned briefly. That is something that we need uh, desperately in town and. Commercial uses at ground level, those were um, some of the things that really stood out to me. Um, I think that um, further consideration to putting the parking garage underground, if that's a possibility, uh, would have made a difference to me. Um, and I just think, as Susan said, that it just, you know, this plan or this uh, proposal just does not align with the shared vision that we outlined in the CCP. Uh, the guiding principles that we set out. I think that uh, it's a, you know, we're going against the community's wishes in um, considering this lot consolidation. And as much as I'd like to give a, an opportunity to uh, to see more about the proposal and, you know, see what the, the developer has in mind, I also think that um, there's a huge part of me that just does not want to betray um, the current guidelines that we've set out. And I think that it's, it's too new to start uh, considering changes to it. Okay, any further discussion? Just a reminder to councillors that the current motion before us is the motion to defer consideration until after a new heritage bylaw is approved. So by voting in favor, 
you're voting in favor of deferral by voting against the motion, you're voting against deferral. Okay, is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of the deferral motion? Opposed? In favor? Okay, the motion is defeated. That brings us back to the main motion, which is the recommendation, which has been moved and seconded. If there's any further discussion or debate on the main motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? In favor or opposed? In favor, is that in favor? Okay, uh, the motion's defeated. Or the motion's carried rather, sorry. The, the recommendation's carried. Okay, so this will proceed to a public hearing in the new year. Uh, that takes us on to the anti-racism special committee. There are two recommendations there. Looks pretty pro forma again. It's about advertising and a slight change to the terms of reference. Anybody want to move that? Moved by Councilor Bertel, seconded by Councilor Duggan. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. That takes us on to the second of the uh, committee uh, recommendations related to the application. Uh, so, Mr. McDonald, if you can just provide the same summary for that particular recommendation. Thank you, Your Worship. This is a report that went through the Heritage Advisor Committee that's reporting back to Council. Again, it's a, a application from the Lunenberg Arms Hotel located at 94 Pelham Street has made application to demolish 102 Pelham Street and consolidate the lands with 94 Pelham Street to enable an expansion to the hotel. Both properties, 94 Pelham Street as well as 102 Pelham Street are in the Old Town Heritage Conservation District. The properties are not registered heritage properties. However, they are in the UNESCO World Heritage Site the Old Town National Historic District, as well as the Heritage Conservation District. As such, they are regulated pursuant to the Heritage Conservation District Plan and Bylaw. The municipality may grant the application either with or without conditions or may refuse it. The recommendation from the Heritage Advisory Committee was to refuse to approve first reading or proceed to a public hearing in order to consider it and if deem advisable, approve the issuance of a certificate of appropriateness for the demolition or removal of the structure located at 102 Pelham Street subject to the following condition, that the certi certificate of appropriateness for the demolition or removal of the structure located at 102 Pelham Street be conditional upon the owners obtaining a building permit for the addition to 94 Pelham Street in conformity with the application and plans and elevations at attachment F as submitted and attached within four years of the date of the issuance of the certificate of appropriateness for demolition or removal. So that's a motion trying to tie in the actual design of the addition as part of the approval process for the demolition and removal of 102 Pelham Street. So the Heritage uh, Advisory Committee considered that motion and they're recommending refusal to the uh, council. So thank you. Thank you. So there, so the recommendation, just so everybody's clear, is to refuse the application. Uh, there is a draft motion provided. If it's anybody's pleasure to move that motion. Councillor Sanford, is there a seconder? Councillor Duggan. Any discussion or debate? Deputy Mayor. Well, once again, Your Worship, I think um, you know, this should be um, uh, brought forward to the public for a public hearing to have decided on, on it. And I think it's very reasonable to have um, the stipulation that a building permit has to be approved for the new build before the, the building is demolished, obviously. So the building won't be demolished needlessly. It will be, uh, it will be done in the context of a new development. So I would be in favor of the motion. So are you in favor or against? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you won't be in favor of the motion. Yeah, I didn't hear. Well, I'm in favor of, the report. of the recommendations. So you'll be voting no. 
Any further discussion or debate? Councilor Bertels? I'll just echo there with uh, uh, Peter that I do agree with this. I think we should go ahead to the public hearing. Any Councilor Sam? I think we need to give serious consideration when we're talking about demolishing buildings in the heritage district, not understanding the outstanding universal value that's given without our heritage planning documents and bylaws aligned with our plan that we're working from. So again, while it's not a designated heritage building specifically, it still adds value to the fabric of the community and to the streetscape. I would be opposed. I believe you mean in favor. I would be in favor of the motion. Yes. Opposed to the demolition. It's it confusing when it's a negative motion. Yes. We don't get many negative records. Yeah. Thank you. That's unavoidable. Any further discussion or debate? All right, just to clarify, so that nobody votes the wrong way, voting in favor of this motion is a vote to refuse the application and to not go to public here. Voting to a uh, against the motion. I mean, it doesn't take us to public hearing, but then we can make a motion afterwards if that's the desire of council to go to public hearing. Councilor Halverson, not a question. Hello. Great. Uh, Yeah, there'd be second reading after public hearing, yes. No. Yeah. So once again, those in favor of refusing going to a public hearing. Those opposed. Motion is defeated. <clears throat> now, if somebody would care to move a positive motion, so moved, seconded by Councillor Halverson. Um, I believe we can just take the wording from the other recommendation and copy it. Uh, so that's clear to everyone. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. All right. That takes us on to new business. Uh, comprehensive community plan implementation projects, RFP award, staff report and recommendation. Lisa is going to speak to that. Uh, thank you, Alyssa, just a brief summary. Um, as, Ms. as Ms. McMillan outlined in her report, an RFP was issued for the three components of the CCP implementation, and the combined total is over $100,000 and therefore must be awarded by council. Staff have reviewed the proposals received and conducted interviews and completed evaluations as outlined in the report. And staff are recommending the award of all three components to the MC advisory group in the amount of $111,750 plus HST as noted in the draft motion. Thank you, Lisa. Would anybody like to move that motion? Moved by the deputy mayor. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Hal uh, Councillor Halverson. You're just always on the draw. Councillor Sanford, my apologies. Um, is there any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, we have a grant application from the Berg Classic. I assume that's also the finance director. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so the Berg Classic has submitted a grant request for their March 2022 event. Um, the report outlines uh, council support for this group in the past. If we apply the same considerations that were used during our spring grant review, um, it is recommended that council approve a $421 grant pending the group receiving their charity status before their event. Okay, there's a draft motion provided there. Is it anybody's pleasure to move that? Moved by Councillor Duggan, seconded by Councillor Bertels. Any discussion or debate? Councillor Halverson. Uh, yeah, so just uh, first off, I want to say I think we can all agree that 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 would not cover all of their ice rental time. No, 
So if we, I applied the same um, process that we had used in the spring, that it was either the grant request um, for groups that have been supported before or the amount that had been supported in the past. The request is far, far exceeds the budget that we, we have allotted at this point. And so then I defaulted back to the support that they've received in the past. It is, I feel like it's in $4,000 range. Yep. Till the end of March, yes, that is correct. Yep. We may not have any, it just depends. Any other comments, questions? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, motion is carried. That takes us on to the new collective agreement for RCMP potential budget impact. There is a staff report. Thank you. Uh, we haven't heard officially from uh, from the provincial government. Cold killing all the batteries. Okay, once again, thank you. We, we have not heard officially from the Department of Justice, uh, either directly through them or through uh, the Department of Municipal Affairs, what the impact of the RCMP contract negotiation process is going to be on municipalities. We had a, a meeting on Friday afternoon, the AMA uh, virtually met with the uh, Deputy Minister of Service Nova Scotia and Paul LaFleche basically said uh, he's not included in any conversations around how much of the cost will be borne by, uh, by municipalities. So our point in, in writing, requesting that a letter be written is to simply go on, on file as saying that uh, if the full cost of the uh, salary increase plus the retroactive portion is passed along to municipalities, it's gonna result in a significant cost to municipalities. And we would like to be uh, at least on record as saying, uh, we think that the federal government who has much deeper pockets than we do, or the provincial government who has much deeper pockets than we do, <laughs> we'll say it a little nicer than that, but uh, you know, should, should bear a greater burden of this cost and municipalities, it should be recognized as limited revenue uh, raising capacity. And this would put a, a very severe burden on deaths. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, there is a draft motion provided to that effect. Councilor Halverson moving the motion. Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Any discussion, debate, or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. That takes us on to Senior Safety Program, Provincial Funding, a request for a letter of support. Seems Deputy Mayor moving. Moving the... Bus along, uh, Council Bertel seconding. Any discussion or debate or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 
Opposed? The motion is carried. That takes us on to five ton salt truck for public works, request for budget increase and tender award. There's a staff report and recommendation. And Dennis, if you would care to summarize that for us, that would be good. All right. Um, so for the 2021-22 uh, uh, fiscal year, we had a budget approved um, to purchase a replacement uh, five ton uh, salt truck to, to replace our existing 2002 um, <clears throat> GMC. We had put together a budget of 175,000. Uh, we identified that based on the purchase of, of the uh, last assault truck that, that we made um, in 2020. 20, 20. Um, so, so we put this out the public tender and we got to two bids but back in. Um, but both of them were for a new truck, uh, but they were both over the budget cost at approximately 202,000 and 224,000, including net HST. And it just seems that these prices now re represent the current market value for new vehicles of this type. Um, I put together a technical bid evaluation that was completed for both bids and the proposal from Nova Truck Center for a 2023 Freightliner for 193,600 plus HST is acceptable and re recommended to, to be purchased. Um, so, uh, as far, far as the discussion goes, <clears throat> um, um, as far, far as the specifications uh, get gathered on these to two to two bit vehicles, um, that they both meet or exceed the expectations that we set out in the RFP. Uh, the only thing um, of concern was the uh, that, that the prices were over the budget. Um, so in order to make this purchase, the budget would have to be increased from 175,000 to 202,000, which is a $27,000 increase. Uh, the options that we considered was the to do net nothing, uh, basically not, not, uh, not, not purchase a truck, but we eliminated this as our current 2002 to top kick in, incurs high, high maintenance costs and lo, low reliability. Uh, it's very, very difficult to get parts for, for, for repair to, due to the age of the vehicle. And that therefore it should, should be replaced as, as soon as possible. We also discussed uh, negotiating price for, from the, vet, the vendors and uh, speaking to them, it's, it's not anticipated that, that the price of a new truck it can be reduced by the $27,000 that, that we need and to still meet, meet the specifications that, that we need. Um, and the other option to go, go out for rebid, re re um, we're not expected to, re to receive any kind of new, new proposals that, that meet our specifications within the, within the budget. So uh, as far as for financial goes, um, uh, uh, again, we're not anticipating that the market price will de decrease. In fact, it'll probably increase again if we defer to, to next year. Uh, the town has the capacity for the increased 27,000 in borrowing for this project and interest rates are currently st still low for capital for financing. So, so our motion is to approve the increase in the budget for, for the replacement and to purchase this uh, this vehicle um, as outlined in the, the report. Thank you. There are motions provided to affect the staff recommendation. Is it anyone's pleasure to move those? Councillor Sanford, seconded by Councillor Ernst. Any questions, discussion or debate? Uh, Councillor Halverson. Thank you. Dennis, the... Uh... I'm just curious, this truck that we're buying, are we buying just the chassis and attaching the equipment we already have, or does this come with a you know, new spreader, new bucket? What, what, are we, what's, what are we talking about? Um, I'll, I'll have to, have to check, check the RFP. I believe that, that it was with, with the gear, uh, but, but, but I did just have to verify by that. Um, I'm just going by memory and I can't, can't tell you 100% for sure. I just, you know, uh, I mean, I haven't bought a five-ton truck in some time, but uh, I just, you know, it just seems like a lot of money. If we're talking about with the gear, I mean, I know that that, mm. that gets me a lot, of, a lot of dollars as well. And if we're replacing that, I mean, we can do... Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, actually, I did just recall that there was clarifications with the bidders as far as far as the gear that that go on the the, the plow side as well. So it it, it does include include, include the uh, the plow, plowing gear. Yeah. Okay. Further questions or debate? <coughs> Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed. Motion is carried. Now I need a motion for us to move to meet in camera pursuant to section 22.2 of the Municipal Government Act to discuss the items listed. Moved by Councilor Bertel, seconded by Councilor Sanford. All those in favor, opposed. Uh, the motion is carried and we will recess until 7.30. Um,